Nice one, Helen. Is he really fighting in one of these? Oh, no, 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 no. These are like low level fights. You're gonna be fighting up there. Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie, shang -Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings is out. I know you have lots of Abomination questions, so this will be my video all about what's going on with the Abomination during the shang -Chi movie. The director and the producer said that this is just meant to be a teaser for big things that are happening for him in the future Marvel Phase 4, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos, there's a bunch of really big stuff coming up. And obviously careful for spoilers for the shang -Chi movie if you have not seen it yet, because we'll be talking about some really spoilery stuff. But when Shang-Chi and Katie go to Macau to find his sister mistakenly thinking that she contacted him with the postcard of the Great Protector Dragon, John John explains this whole big operation. It's very reminiscent of the operation that Sharon Carter builds as the power broker inside Madripoor. In fact, when they first released the trailer and we saw some of these scenes out of context, a lot of people mistakenly thought that it was meant to be Madripoor. We find out that his sister Sha Ling ran away from home at the age of 16 and came to Macau to set up this fighting ring operation. She's turned it into this whole big thing. It's obviously meant to foreshadow the turn where she takes over the Ten Rings organization in the post credit scene. They pass a bunch of low level fights, including the extremist soldier from Iron Man 3 fighting one of the former liberated Black Widows from the Black Widow movie, sort of foreshadowing the Trevor reveal, just another connection to Iron Man 3, the last big Marvel movie to invoke the Mandarin. Even though the way they explain it in this movie, Wen Wu never called himself the Mandarin and they turned the name into an even bigger joke. This movie is also being released right after the Black Widow movie, but the Black Widows that Natasha and Yelena Belova freed with Red Guardian and Melina happened years ago during 2018, right before the events of Avengers Infinity War. So you have to remember the time jump. This is happening in 2023. So if that Black Widow had not been snapped, she would have been participating in this underground fighting scene for years. Same thing for the extremist soldier. The events of Iron Man 3 took place back in 2013, 10 years ago. But then they reveal Wong fighting the Abomination in the main ring, like the big fight Mortal Kombat style, for the big money. That is an awful lot of sandwich money that Wong just won himself. Yes, it's a super cool cameo scene, but the bigger twist is that as they fight, it actually seems like Wong is almost coaching the Abomination. He's even kind of pulling his punches, so to speak. Metaphorically, then literally, like he pulls the Abomination's punch through a portal so that he knocks himself out. As they fight, he says, you want to know how it feels, I'm going to show you how it feels. The Abomination isn't quite as powerful as the Hulk, almost as powerful as the Hulk. So as you saw in all the trailers, he is able to smash one of Wong's magical shields. Like, that's how strong he is. Wong seems really pissed off, like he was expecting him to pull his punches a little bit. So that's why he pulls this trick on the Abomination, causing him to punch himself and knock himself out. But he calls Abomination by his real name, Emil Blonsky. And even though you can't tell that much just from watching the movie, Tim Roth did come back to do some vocalization for the character during the movie. He was also at the movie premiere. So that is him making all those noises and those grunts when they're fighting. And they modeled Tim Roth's face for motion capture for the Abomination here, even though he looks a little bit different. I've talked about this in previous videos already, but the reason why the Abomination looks different now is they just made him more comic book accurate. If you're not a big comic book reader or if it's just been a long time since you've read those original Incredible Hulk comic books, this is exactly what the Abomination looks like in the comics. The coloring of his skin, down to the fins on his head, his pointed teeth. Within the context of the MCU though, it's most likely that his gamma mutation just continued to evolve and change his body over time at a slower rate. Like the initial dose of gamma and serum that he was given during Incredible Hulk turned him into this during that movie, but that was back in 2008. Cut to 13 years later and his body just continued to change until it looks like this. The real reason why they changed him though was because back when they made the original Incredible Hulk movie, they were just playing it safe, trying not to make too many weird looking characters. The director claimed he didn't like the fins. Now that they've done Rocket and Groot, two super popular Marvel characters shown that people are totally down for talking raccoons and talking trees, the super weird stuff often winds up being the most popular stuff. So Kevin Feige says that nowadays they feel safer doing the super weird stuff. Like Alligator Loki was not something that they would have tried back during Marvel Phase 1. And now in present day, he's one of the biggest fan favorite Loki variants, Superior Loki. But they take this Wong Abomination thing even further. Like he almost seems like he's bros with the Abomination. Like they're mates and they've been hanging out for a while now. Then they have this joke about a bunch of dudes having to drag him out of the ring because he's so big and heavy after their fight. And in the locker room, just a moment later, Wong asks him how his jaw is, like, how you doing, buddy? 
It opens up a portal to a special high-tech facility where there's a special containment cell with a bunch of lasers designed to hold him. It looks very reminiscent of the one that Nick Fury built to contain the Hulk in the first Avengers movie. He tells him that he needs to learn to control his punches like they practice, confirming that Wong has been doing this with Abomination for a good long while now. And as I explained the timeline of the movie, this takes place around the time Falcon and Winter Soldier is happening, but before Spider-Man Far From Home and Spider-Man No Way Home. So several months after Avengers Endgame. So everyone's asking, why has Wong been working with the Abomination? It just seems like a super weird thing to do. Clearly something more is going on here than Wong just wanting to earn some more sandwich money. I think it's pretty clear from the look of the facility that he takes him back to that this is supposed to be the raft because that's where he was taken after the events of the Incredible Hulk according to Kevin Feige. Like they just kept him there all the way through Avengers Infinity War, the snap, the blip in Avengers Endgame. So whatever he's been doing this whole time, they always at least take him back to the raft. Even though he's only in the movie for a hot second, the producer said that this is only the beginning for the Abomination in Marvel Phase 4. So I think we're probably all in agreement that this is all meant to be set up for a Val scene similar to the Black Widow post credit scene where they explain that he's either been working for Val for a long time already like the way Yelena Belova was when we saw her show up or Val is going to show up and recruit him when he comes back in the She-Hulk series because that is the next place that they've confirmed Abomination is coming back according to Kevin Feige. Mark Ruffalo's Bruce Banner and his Hulk are also coming back for that too for She-Hulk's origin story. And that's also probably why Banner showed up during the post credit scene as well because when you're picking who's going to show up in Avengers post credit scene, how do you pick? Usually you want to tease something that's happening really soon and a lot of what happens in the post credit scene is foreshadowing for future Avengers 5 stuff which we won't see for a long time. And for instance, the reason Captain Marvel showed up in that post credit scene even though Captain Marvel 2, the Marvels movie with the multiple versions of Captain Marvel, isn't going to happen for a good long while is because Daniel Cretton, the director of the Shang-Chi movie, had worked with Brie Larson a lot in the past and they were friends and he just said, oh, you know, whatever the post credit scene winds up being, I would love to work with Brie Larson again. So if you're wondering why they did it Avengers Zoom call like they did during Avengers Endgame, that's why they did it that way because they had to explain how Captain Marvel could be there yet still be on the other side of the galaxy in Kree scroll space. And they also said that they picked the characters that were going to be in the post credit scene at the last minute. Like that was literally the last thing that they filmed for the movie during reshoots. So Kevin Feige and Marvel wanting to tease what's happening next in She-Hulk is the reason why Bruce Banner was in that post credit scene specifically. The whole thing with Abomination during She-Hulk though is that the series is actually being billed as a half hour legal comedy type of show even though I don't think that it's going to be a comedy straight up. Like they're playing up the idea that she's a lawyer for superheroes in the Marvel Universe. So that's why it's going to be a nine episode series because it's going to be closer to the episode length of WandaVision. But even though she's a lawyer, her normal gamma form is always closer to being more like Professor Hulk's gamma form. Like she rarely went full Incredible Hulk. So she spends most of her time as an eight foot tall green lawyer who's super strong but also has all of her mental capacity and intelligence as Jennifer Walters. And because of the lawyer part of it all, they kind of tease that they're going to be doing different cameos in different episodes, like different cases in different episodes, and they'll use that to cameo different Marvel characters. Abomination might be one of her cases, and that's why he's back for the series. But also as part of that, they'll weave in the Val, Thunderbolts, and Dark Avengers of it all. Also, I hope that they tease a big Hulk versus Abomination rematch. But we'll see because of the whole banner of it all. Like he's turned back into banner now from Professor Hulk. I know there are a ton of questions about that too. You have to remember that Banner can control his gamma form and even though he had an agreement with the Hulk like that's why they became Professor Hulk because the Hulk wanted to be free but Banner also wanted to be in control as well. I don't think they plan on killing him off or anything like that anytime soon. I think part of the reason why he's Banner here is one because they didn't want to spend the extra money like the extra couple million dollars it would cost to do him as motion capture as a full version of the Hulk because even though they do have a big budget for the movie that is super expensive and it's way easier to have him just look as Banner and show up at the sling and I think that budgetary consideration also factors into the way that they're going to use him during the She-Hulk series like yes he will Hulk out at some point during the She-Hulk series but he's probably going to be Banner for a lot of that too just because it's way cheaper to have him walk around as Banner. But the whole vibe of Abomination during the Shang-Chi movie is that they're trying to give him more of an anti-hero arc in the MCU instead of a straight up villain the way they ended with his character in the Incredible Hulk film. 
It's also possible early theory that they pay off some of that Thunderbolts Dark Avengers stuff during Captain America 4 because clearly all the Val stuff and all these different movies and Disney Plus series is building up to something bigger. Like when are we actually going to see Abomination running around with John Walker US agent, Baron Zemo, Yelena Belova, all the other Marvel anti-heroes that she'll theoretically put on that team? In fact, Julia Louis-Dreyfus was also seen recently getting ready to film near Atlanta where they're filming Black Panther 2. So a lot of people are theorizing that she's going to show up during Black Panther 2 to recruit another villain from that movie. You can let me know in the comments who you think that might wind up being. And also because we know from the Black Widow post credit scene that Yelena Belova will be a big part of the Hawkeye series, we're going to see those episodes later this year, Val also might show up again during the Hawkeye series. If you remember the big Disney Plus event that happened last year where they released all those trailers, like there were a whole bunch of trailers that they dumped. They're going to be doing the exact same thing later this year in November. So when I do videos for all those brand new trailers for all the upcoming Disney Plus series, they'll probably give us release dates for some of that stuff. I'm working on a new video for Avengers 5 and all the stuff that they set up with that in the post credit scene. Obviously, everyone's still wondering about where that signal is broadcasting to from inside the 10 rings and what's going on with them. That should post in the next couple of days. Make sure you have alerts enabled so you don't miss that. My full Marvel What If Episode 5 video will also post Wednesday just like normal. Everyone click here for my Shang-Chi post credit scene video and click here for my full Shang-Chi breakdown video with Easter eggs for the entire movie. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.